championship next week at Hancock Stadium on the campus of Illinois State University in Normal. Hello everyone and welcome to our final game of the year here on Channel 3. I am Lee Anderson, alongside me is Dave Mrotek and we have a great matchup between the defending champions, the Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers who bring in a lot of experience into this semifinal game. They've won their last four semifinal games in a row, but they're going up against a great team in the Stevenson Patriots. But Dave, when you do talk about the Tigers, you gotta start off with the man who runs the show, their quarterback, their returning starter, Tim Broca. Well, you're right, Lee. When you get this far in the playoffs, it's time for the big game players to step it up. And for the Tigers, it's quarterback Tim Brilka. He's thrown for over 1,500 yards this season, only two picks, 16 touchdown passes. He's got a little help in the backfield. His mate Kelly Crosby also has scored over 20 touchdowns this season. On the other side, the Stevenson Patriots, they, another year they have a huge offensive line. It's been run, run, run primarily for the Patriots this year and with great success. And you talk about a great one-two punch, Steve Clancy and Kyle Brath, both with over 1,300 yards rushing this year. Yeah, Stevenson has a dynamic duo themselves, as you said, led by Steve Clancy. Over 1,300 yards rushing, 20 touchdowns on the season. He's got some help with Kyle Brand, who was our CCN MVP last week in the Frem game. He as well has over 1,300 yards on the season, so the two of them behind that big offensive line could pose some problems for the Tigers. Stevenson in size matches up very well against Wheaton Warrenville South. They got a big size advantage. We'll see if that's a telling tale in the game before it's all said and done. So coming up next, it's the Patriots and the Tigers for the right to go to this Class 6A championship next weekend against either the Palatine Pirates or the Lincoln Way Knights. The kickoff comes up next here on Channel 3. Exciting high school basketball action is coming to Continental Cablevision's Channel 3. Get ready to put it on. We return to Lincolnshire for this Class 6A semifinal between the defending champion Tigers of Wheaton Warrenville South and the undefeated and three-time North Suburban champions, the Stevenson Patriots. The Patriots will be kicking off in their home green uniforms with yellow numbers, Wheaton Warrenville South in the road white uniforms with orange numbers, black pants, and orange helmets with a black tiger paw on their helmets. We're underway, final game of the season here on Channel 3. A short kick and Wheaton Warrenville South will operate with pretty good field position as it was taken at about the 30 yard line, brought back to roughly the 37 yard line. And that's where the Tigers will start the first offensive series of the game, led by, as we said in pregame, Tim Brilka, the senior, quarterback last year's state championship team in Class 6A. Their running backs, Kelly Crosby and William Gerlesitz. The wideouts, Matt Dorman and Justin Penn. The tackles, Mike D'Estasio and Jason Van Dusen. Guards, Dan Rogers and James Schuster. Center, Dan Woods, and the tight end is Kyle Hubert. And the first play is a running play. And Brilka, not much room to operate as he is tackled after a short two yard gain to the 39. Excellent. Wheaton was lucky to get anything out of that play as Brilka decided to keep the handoff. He faked it to Crosby. A little slow getting out of the backfield, only picked up a couple. Brilka coming into this fourth playoff game for the season for the Tigers with 200 yards rushing and 401 yards passing. Defensively for the Patriots, on the ends, Rache Hill and Brian Novosel. The defensive tackles, Jared Reese and Parker Dodson will set the rest of the defensive alignment following the second down play. Option play, Crosby gets close to the 45 yard line, a gain of six. It's going to be third and about two. That was a nice game by the Tigers. Brookie, you can see his experience, the senior quarterback, running that option well. They've gone from the power running game of last year to a more finesse offense, a little more balance. Good gain there. It leaves him third and short. The rest of the defensive alignment for the Pats, the linebackers on the outside, Mike Corcoran and Adam Butler. The middle linebacker 
is the tremendous one, Jeff Skibitsky. The defensive backs, John Riley, Josh Weisberg, and Mike Jurisak. Here's the option play, and Brilk has got the first down as he's plopped down at the 49 after a four-yard gain. First first down of the contest. Again, Brilka running the option, this time to the right side, decides to keep it. Smart quarterback, he sees that he's got a little break to the right, off the end, knows it's enough to pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he does for the Tigers. Steve Clancy, by the way, he rounds out the defensive alignment for the Patriots, as he is the safety. So it's first and 10, Tigers near midfield. As you can see in the background, you see snow. Yes, you see it here in November. And we're going to get our first flag of the game. It would appear it would be against the Tigers. It's a false start against Wheaton Warrenville South. That'll cost them five and move them back to their own 44, as it'll be first and 15 from there. I was talking to the athletic director before the game, a couple hours before the game, that'd be John Martin for Stevenson. And he was saying there were several inches of snow on the field that they had to get off prior to game time. And as you can see, plenty of piles surrounded the field. And certainly, considering all the snow they had in the field, they've done a great job with making the field very playable for the semifinal game. Broca fades back. Now he's going to run. He is tackled from behind at midfield. Tackled by Skibitsky after a six-yard gain. It'll be second and nine. Delayed quarterback draw on that play. Straight drop back by Brilka. A little delay, and then he sees the opening. Decides to take it. Nice leg tackle to stop him from picking up four or five more yards. Brilka, as we showed you in our pregame on the screen, He's passed for 1,527 yards this year, 85 out of 144 attempts, including 14 touchdowns. Option play, Brilka keeps it, and he's only going to gain about two as he's tackled by Rache Hill, and it'll be third seven now for the Tigers. That might, might have been a questionable decision by Brilka. You can see Crosby right there talking to him. Crosby was open on the wing. He wanted the pitch. Crosby might have been able to turn the corner on the left side and gone upfield. And that's what he was probably saying to Brilka there, give me the ball. Clock continues to move. Stevenson yet to get their first offensive series. Opening offensive drive of the game. Eight and a half minutes remaining, and the clock continues to move. Remaining in the opening quarter, there is no score. First pass attempt, open, and a touchdown Saving tackle by Riley. Otherwise, Penn is going to be in the end zone for the Tigers. First down for Wheaton Warrenville South to the Stevenson 23 yard line, and that's a pickup of 25. You're right, touchdown saving tackle by Riley. It was just a post pattern cutting across the middle. He had no help from the safety. And that's why he was able to get inside the defensive back, slipping a little on the field. Again, that field with the snow. It's going to be very wet, tough to get traction for these guys. First and 10 at the 23-yard line, handoff to Crosby, and he's backed down at the 20-yard line after a three-yard game. It'll be second down and seven from there. Crosby and the ball carrier, the tackle. Nothing much doing up the middle for Crosby. Gain of about three, second and seven. Picks up three yards on the play. Second and seven, right around red zone territory near the 20 yard line. Justin Penn moments ago catching a 25 yard pass from Tim Brilka on third and seven. And now we're gonna have our first time out of the contest and that'll be charged to Wheaton Warrenville South with 727 remaining in the opening quarter. And there is no score. Palatine and Lincoln Way, the other semifinal, the game being played tonight. Pirates undefeated and the Lincoln Way Knights also undefeated. There you see the Patriots, Bill Mitz with the headsets. You can see the long cord. 14th year at the school as head coach. They've made the playoffs now eight straight years, nine overall, as you take a look at Bill Mitz in his 14 year head coaching career. Bill with the long uh, cord, as you can see there. 
pulling it back to the sidelines. Oh, you see the snow around the field as well. As we were telling you just a short time ago that there were several inches of snow from three days ago that were still on the field that they obviously had to plow off the field and they've done a great job as I mentioned with the field. John Thorne on the other side is in his 17th year as head coach at Wheaton Warrenville South and this is one of the most respected football programs in the entire state. You talk about Wheaton Warrenville South, Mount Carmel, Joliet Catholic, Palatine, Stevenson, just to name a few with tremendous football programs. Second down, the keeper, Brilka, inside the 20, and he's tackled from behind at about the 17, a gain of three, which will bring up third and four. So far, the Patriots' defense, there you see Brilka, they've done a pretty good job containing him in the running game when he elects to keep it on the option. He's been picking up three, four yards a clip. Huge crowd here, you might expect. Not too cold, considering a couple of weeks ago, it appeared much colder when we had the Maris Palatine game. Pitch back Crosby, and Crosby should have a first down as he's knocked out of bounds on the opposite side of the field at about the 12. It is a first down, third first down of the drive for the Tigers. Crosby showing a little power. He lowers that shoulder and he gets the first down. You see here, he goes around the right side, good blocking, the line pulling, and he lowers the boom, dives for that first down marker. He's able to pick it up and keep the drive going. First down. Ball actually marked at the 11-yard line. Almost halfway through the opening quarter, and now we're going to have another flag. And that one will once again be against the Tigers. Second penalty on this drive, both costing them at the time 10 yards. It'll be first down and 15 back to the 16-yard line. Last week, we had our closest game of the season in which Stevenson held on for a five-point win over Fremd. Could we have another close finish as well? Tigers' only loss this year was the sixth week of the season, and they lost at Naperville Central 10-7, the team they beat last year when Naperville Central was ranked number one all year long in the papers. They won the Class 6A championship game 22 to 21 and a thriller. Gerlesitz with his first handoff gets inside the 15, back to about the original line of scrimmage on this series. It'll be second and 10. Defensively for the Patriots, this week poses some new problems. Last week against Frem, they could pretty much focus on Dorsey as Frem had a sophomore quarterback. Not a very strong passing attack, but the Tigers a little more balanced, and they run that option. It's going to be tougher for Stevenson as their defense is going to be strung out all over the field. Second and 10 from the 11 of Stevenson. Pitch back Crosby. Crosby tries to break to the outside. He does. He's inside the five and down to the two. Nice job by Crosby, avoiding losing perhaps a couple, and he ends up getting about a nine-yard gain. It's going to be third down and about one. Another good run by Crosby. He's able to turn the corner. Stevenson right there, the linebacker's not able to stay outside and contain and a touchdown saving tackle once again. Close to the first down, it'll bring up third and short. The ball at the two yard line. Wheaton Warrenville South trying to break out in front first on their first offensive series of the game. 5.57 remaining in the opening quarter. There you see on the top left hand corner of the screen no score but that could change very soon Kelly Crosby has got a touchdown for the Tigers impressive opening drive as you see the fans opposite from where we're situated on their feet applauding their Tigers nothing fancy there just straight up the gut by Crosby Wheaton Warrenville South just going right up the middle Good search by the offensive line. He ducks his head, finds a little crack. And look at the line just pushing the Patriots back into their own end zone. 
554 as the kick is no good. So the score will remain Wheaton Warrenville South six and Stevenson nothing. 554 remaining in the opening quarter. Well, the Patriots, you know, they've fallen behind a couple times during the season. They were trailing Libertyville 14 to nothing before they rallied to win that game 28 to 14. Now a team that hasn't trailed all year, you're talking about the Palatine Pirates. It's been blowout city for the Pirates all year long. Their closest game they had was their opening game of the year against Naperville North in which they won by two touchdowns. Yeah, talking about a balanced offense, the Pirates certainly have one. The combination of Mariani, Williams, and Stopka at quarterback, you don't know who to focus on. Six to nothing in favor of the Tigers. They score on their opening drive of the game. Stevenson now will get their first taste of the football offensively. Trailing by six. Wheaton Warrenville South, we mentioned, they're the defending Class 6A champions of a year ago. They also, a few years back, won a Class 5A championship over Joliet Catholic, winning that game in overtime. And they've also been runner-up twice in John Thorne's 17-year career. Short kick at the 25, and not much yardage on the return for the Patriots, as they will start offensively first and 10 right at about the 25-yard line. Offensively for the Stevenson Patriots, their quarterback is junior Curtis Zervik. The running backs, Steve Clancy, Kyle Brandt, we talked about that great one-two punch, both over 1,300 yards rushing a piece this year. Joe Marth also will be in the backfield. The double tight ends, Brian Novosel and Doug Bryan. The tackles, Josh Leith and Josh Kilker. The guards, Parker Dodson and Sean Coughlin. And the center is Andrew Husted. Pitch back to Kyle Brandt, and Brandt will get back to the original line of scrimmage, which was at the 24. No gain, it'll be second and 10. Again, Stevenson going to the short side of the field. We noticed last week they liked to do that a lot. Curious call there. Brandt couldn't turn the corner. He stopped for no gain. Defensively for Wheaton Warrenville South, the ends, Pat Crosby and John Garrow, the tackles, Dwayne Zimmerman and Eugene Beard. The nose guard is Nathan Colbaba, the linebackers, Brad Camden and Steve Sternad. Look out, there goes Zervek, and he's in the grasp, and that'll go as a sack, as he's sacked by Beard. 5'11", 216, and a senior. And he's backed up with the sack to the 16. It'll be third and 18 now for the Patriots. Not a very precarious beginning for the uh, Stevenson Patriots, Dave. No, certainly not. And I was curious to see that matchup because the Patriots have one of the biggest offensive lines we've seen this year. And I thought that would be their strength in this game, especially running the ball with Clancy and Brandt. Clancy, a small guy at 5'9", He's tough to find behind that huge offensive line, but so far the Patriots, their line is showing some holes as the Tigers were able to get through on the sack. Third and 18, Zervik with the handoff, and the keeper rather, and he's gonna lose two more. Three and out for the Patriots. There you see Zervik. He goes to the sidelines and will regroup with his offensive teammates. 4.05, clock moving remaining in the opening quarter. Wheaton Warrenville South is going to get great field position, probably to start this next drive in Stevenson territory, and already leading 6-0. Yeah, this could be dangerous for the Patriots, not able to get anything going offensively after a long drive by Wheaton Warrenville South. Has to be a little demoralizing to them. Hopefully their defense will get out there and pick it up for them. John Riley standing in his end zone, awaiting the snap. Kelly Crosby awaiting the kick for the Tigers. Here's the kick, pretty good kick, and it will take a Stevenson bounce and will blow dead at the 49-yard line. So in fact, the Tigers will take over in Stevenson territory. I do want to mention the, that I, I did want to round out the defensive alignment for Wheaton Warrenville South. Their cornerbacks, Doug Arden and Kevin Whitkinack. The strong safety is Terrence Moore, and the free safety is Eric Aster. There you look at the Patriot bench. 12-0 for the Patriots, best season ever. They had never made it past the second round until this year. Well, here they are in the semifinals, a win away from going to the state championship game, but they face 
one tough opponent and already trailing 6 nothing. Chris Vasquez, the ball carrier, as he gets his first carry. End game's about a yard of the 48 of Stevenson. Second and nine. The Patriots defense has to step it up here as we were talking earlier, Lee. This being the playoffs, it's one and out, and if you fall down by two touchdowns, teams have a tendency to panic, and that's when it can really avalanche and have a snowball effect on the team, and it could be a blowout. Where you look at last week's game, I mean, the New Trier Trevians undefeated all year, and it was no contest as the Tigers blew out New Trier in a game that would have appeared to have been much closer. Gerles, it's not much on the second down handoff, opposite side of the field, he's brought down at the 47, a gain of one, it'll be third and eight. Here's where Stevenson, after struggling on their first offensive series, and then punting and giving up good field position, would love to stop Wheaton Warrenville South right here and get that ball back after struggling three and out on their first offensive series. It's third and eight Tigers at the 47 of Stevenson. Broca. He's in trouble. He's sacked by Hill. Back in Wheat Warrenville South Territory at the 49 yard line. And that's a loss of four. It's fourth down, and the Patriots hold defensively, and they'll get the ball right back. Good defensive stand by the Patriots. They needed that sack. That one could go to the coverage as Brilka wasn't able to find anybody open. He was looking to his receiver, Justin Penn, on the left side running a post pattern. He wasn't able to get it to him. And Stevenson able to hold off the Tigers for the moment. Riley and Jerisak back deep awaiting the kick. Jerisak takes it on the run at the 26, and he is hammered at the 27-yard line. Nice play on the special teams by the Tigers. 127 remaining in the opening quarter, 6 nothing in favor of the Wheat Warrenville South Tigers. That tackle on the special teams for Wheat Warrenville South made by Brad Camden, one of the linebackers for Wheat Warrenville South. Second offensive series now of the game for the Patriots, and obviously they hope it's much better than their first offensive series as they lost yardage in their first offensive series. Three and out. About a one yard gain, and that's all. Joe Marth, the ball carrier. Second and nine after gaining about a yard. No room to run. That's the story so far in the early going for the Patriots. And when they drop back to pass, they're finding pressure on the quarterback very quickly. The Tigers' defense very aggressive out there. They're taking it to the offensive line of the Patriots. 55 seconds, clock rolling, remaining in the first quarter. Kyle Brandt gets out over the 30, near side of the field after about a two-yard gain, and it's going to set up third and about six. Terrence Moore, Steve Stenard, and Eric Oster. Steve Clancy hasn't even carried the ball in the opening quarter. And again, you're talking about two guys that both have rushed for over 1,300 yards apiece, Clancy being uh, the leader at 1,341, including 20 touchdowns. Exactly. Kind of interesting why they haven't given him the ball yet. Certainly can't be fatigued this early in the game, although he is primarily the only two-way player for the Patriots. A lot had to do with that opening drive. Wheaton Warrenville South chewed up six minutes and six seconds on their opening series to score the lone touchdown thus far. Pass is thrown, almost intercepted. It hit the back of Whitkinak, the cornerback, and another three and out for the Patriots. Back to back, three and out offensive series for the Patriots, and they'll punt with five seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Not a smart play by Zervik. You'll see the man had two Wheaton Warrenville South defenders around him. He's looking at his receiver the whole way as well telegraphing where he's going to throw that ball. He had a receiver, Clancy, down the right side. I don't know if Zervik didn't want to chance the deep ball, but questionable, questionable offensive possessions to start the game for the Patriots. Good kick by Riley, trying to get away and doing a great job, but that is Crosby. Crosby has one man to beat inside the 20. He's still on his feet before he's knocked out of bounds by Riley. Spectacular return by Kelly Crosby on the last play of the quarter. And Wheaton Warrenville South will be threatening to score again 
when we start the second quarter. Your score from Stevenson High School, Wheaton Warrenville South 6 and Stevenson nothing. Dave Rotek and I will be back for quarter number two after you watch this here on Channel 3. Big scene. Capsule splashes down. You pull Hanks to safety, okay? Stroke, stroke. More passion. Grab Hanks tight. But not too tight, because we don't want to hurt Tom. He's a big star, after all. Gently, gently. I've just come back from space. This is a big scene. You get to shine. You'd be surprised by everything we're doing to bring you your favorite movies. Continental Cablevision. Let's, uh... We work, you watch. Join us next time on Continental's Cafe. It's on Wednesdays at noon, 5 and 10. You know everybody's talking about it. Oh, that smells so good. I love it. I love it. I'll be there. We'll make it famous. Every weekend, I'll be there. Only on Continental Cablevision's Channel 3. Oh, it's going to be gorgeous. Why aren't you watching it? We return to Stevenson High School where the Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers are in fact leading Stevenson six to nothing. Let's take a look at that great punt return by Crosby last play of the quarter. It all started with Crosby breaking the tackle of Dervishian of Stevenson and then he's able to just go down the left sideline as Stevenson all their players on the coverage are caught in the middle almost giving up on the play. First down and goal from the nine. You missed a run by Tim Broca, the quarterback, eight yards down to the one yard line. It's going to be second and goal as the Tigers try to extend their six point lead. Broca now seven carries in the first half for 21 yards. He has been sacked once. Wishbone formation in the backfield, handoff Crosby. Crosby hit at the line of scrimmage, tries to stretch forward, no word yet by the referee. He's just a little short of the goal line. It'll be third and goal inside the one. That was a great play by Skibitsky. Able to break through the line, he gets the initial hit on Crosby. We'll see Skibitsky. Skibitsky, he'll be number 45 coming in. He makes the initial hit through that mess. It's tough to see. But that stops Crosby's momentum, and he waits for help as they gang tackle and bring him down short of the goal. Let's see if it's a quarterback keeper. In fact, it is. Right up the middle, touchdown. Tim Broca, the quarterback, one yard TD. And the Tigers now lead 12 to nothing, pending the extra point. And that drive very much helped out by Kelly Crosby's 49 yard punt return, the last play of the first quarter. Tigers looking imp impressive, continuing from their masterful, masterful performance of a week ago in which they shut out the Nutria Trevians at home, 42 to nothing. Here's the snap. It's a bad snap, and now they're going to try to run it in and not nearly getting close is Matt Dorman, their holder, also starting wide receiver. And the score will remain Wheaton Warrenville South 12 and Stevenson nothing with 10.43 remaining in the first half. Wheaton Warrenville South, in fact, ahead 12 nothing, not the Patriots. So Stevenson now has got some work to do. We mentioned a few times this year they did fall behind, but they are playing the Class 6A champions. Wheaton Warrenville South Again, the defending Class 6A champions, Kelly Crosby. There you see it, Wheaton Warrenville South with the 12-point lead here early in the second quarter. Kelly Crosby's two-yard touchdown run just over midway through the opening quarter gave the Tigers a 6-0 lead. The extra point was no good. And just moments ago, Tim Brilka, the quarterback, with a one-yard touchdown keeper and the extra point. They didn't even get a crack at it. The, the snap was bad and having to eat the ball, it was Matt Dorman. Tigers kicking off once again with a 12-point lead. Good kick taken by Clancy at the 13. Waits for his blockers. Now has a hole. 
and he's brought down from behind at the 29 yard line as he was tackled by Dorman. Good tackling so far this game as far as the uh, Tigers special teams unit goes on punts and kickoffs. Whoever is receiving the ball for the Patriots is not able to get much going there. That was the best gain for the Patriots thus far on a kicker punt. Clancy able to pick up 10, but again, good tackling, and that's what hurt Stevenson, the missed tackle on Crosby, which set up that big punt return for the Tigers. First and 10, handoff, Steve Clancy. He gains about two out over the 30 to the 31. That was his first carry of the game, did not get a carry, but Stevenson only had six offensive plays in the first quarter, two series of three and out. Exactly. Clancy getting his first carry here, nothing much doing so far for the Patriots offensively. He's tripped up before he can get past the offensive line blocking. In the first quarter, they had Clancy lined up at receiver a couple times, so that could explain why he wasn't getting the ball so much. Faking the handoff to Marth and then giving it to Clancy is Curtis Zervik. Again, not much yardage upfield for Clancy at all. He gains about two more to the 33. It'll be third and six. Again, you'll see the Tigers defense able to get through as the blocking breaks down for the Patriots. You see four offensive linemen for the Patriots still in the middle of the field. And when your offensive line is down, laying on the ground in the middle of the field, you're trying to run outside. That's not a good sign. Third down and six as the Patriots are just trying initially to pick up their first first down of the game. Option play, Clancy, opposite side of the field. He's hit from behind, and he's going to wind up about a yard short. Now, this is going to be an interesting call. If you've watched us cover Stevenson over the past couple of years, Bill Mitz, the kind of coach with his offensive line, he will go for it a lot of times on fourth and short, no matter where they are on the field. There's the best running play so far for Stevenson. It's a pitch to Clancy. He's able to break the initial tackle, or else he would have been caught for a loss again. Patriots are going to go for it, in fact. I think Bill Mitz just wants to try to break up the momentum just to at least get a first down. His team trailing by 12, 8.42 and counting, remaining in the first half in this Class 6A semifinal game. Triple backfield. Last week they made two fourth down conversions and they'll do another in this game. And Kyle Brandt, I guess to no surprise, really was their go-to guy last week in the Fremd win and gets, well, the way it is right now, a big first down, their first of the game. And that's all Kyle Brandt right there is he's hit right at the line of scrimmage and he'll just drive the Tiger defensive player backwards. Look at that surge by Brandt. He picks up that first down all on his own. And speaking of Brandt, he hurt his left hand last week near the end of that Frem game. You can see he's wearing a padded glove on it. We'll have to see if that'll have any effect on his handling the football. Curtis Zervik on the option play, near side Clancy. He's tackled from behind at the 45-yard line by Whitkinak, the cornerback. A gain of four. It'll be second and six. Clancy now becoming involved offensively on this drive. Big first down pickup by the Patriots. They seem to be getting a little more energetic offensively. Four-yard gain is a pretty good gain on first down. You'll see Clancy, it's just a straight pitch to the left side as Zervik running the option again. Once the linebacker bites, he pitches it to Clancy and he's able to turn the corner. Second and six, the handoff to Marth. He's twisted around and brought down at about midfield after a five yard gain by Sternad, one of the linebackers for Wheaton Warrenville South. It'll be third and one. Another good gain by the Patriots. Seems like their offensive line is starting to pick it up. There's the previous play that pitched to Clancy on the run. And here's the last play as he's able to get through the line quickly, finds the hole, picks up five yards, brings up third and short. That's just what the Patriots need with their running game. The ball is at midfield, third and one. Handoff again to Marth. He's easily got the first down. Stretches forward to the 47, a gain of three. Second straight first down by the Patriots. One thing I was talking to John Thorne about was about the size difference of the two clubs. As you see the, the replay, straight forward running to get the first down on third and one. One thing, Dave, I was talking about, as I was mentioning to John Thorne, 
was that what's his biggest concern about playing the Patriots? He said the size. There is a considerable size difference. Stevenson having the big advantage, but the thing that the Tigers have, obviously, with a lot of big hearts, obviously, and great work ethic, is that they're tremendously quick. And when you're tremendously quick, that can make up for some size differential. First down handoff. Getting down to about the 44-yard line. A short three-yard gain is the ball carrier. It'll be second and seven. Well, you're right, Lee. You can tell that hopefully you'll see on this replay here, Stevenson, their offensive line is lined up. Wheaton Warrenville South lines their defensive linemen spread far apart, trying to use their speed. Stevenson then has to be on the, t uh, on the attack. As you'll see on that running play, the blockers are starting to get their assignments. They were a little confused. There again, you can see how the defensive line for the Tigers lines up spread out, not trying to go head on against the Patriots' strength, their big offensive line. They're trying to use their speed, try to get around them. It looked like it confused the Patriots in the first quarter, but they seem to be getting their momentum now offensively. The second down handoff following that three-yard gain by John Dervision, just a short one-yard gain by Joe Marth. And now it'll set up third down and six. Over halfway through, the second quarter, a fast paced first quarter, obviously lots of running, doesn't stop the clock if you don't go out of bounds. And there has only been a total of two passes thrown here in the first half. Steve Clancy near side of the field, no gain on third and six. It'll now be fourth and six. And let's see what, if Mitz will go for it here on fourth down and six from the 43 of Wheaton Warrenville South. The pitch to Clancy, the play worked earlier. This time they're just outnumbered as Wheaton Warrenville South read the play. They've got four defenders over there against only two blockers, one of those blockers being a receiver for the Patriots, so they were badly outnumbered on that call. Patriots once again will go for it. They converted on fourth down and about a yard on this drive not too long ago, but now it's fourth down and about six. Receivers split right and left. Zervik throws, passes complete to Jerosak, and he's gonna be very close. From our vantage point, it looks like he might be just a little short, he's short. but I think they're gonna bring out the chain gang just in case. I think he's short, he didn't run that pattern down enough. There you look at the official. Why he didn't run that pattern downfield, it was just take the defender downfield and then stop and turn and he must not have known exactly how far to go for the first down because it looks like, as you said, Lee, he's going to be short. 419 remains in the first half. He is short, as I thought he would be. And the Tigers do hold and will take over first and 10 at roughly their own 38-yard line. That's just a mental error on the receiver's part. He's got to drive his defender far enough off the ball, and he's got to go himself, at least to the first down marker. 12 to nothing in favor of Wheaton Warrenville South, leading here at Stevenson. The winner goes to Hancock Stadium next Saturday in a game that will be seen on Sports Channel at 2.30 to take on either Lincoln Way or Palatine. Screen pass to Crosby, and Crosby tackled out over the 40 at about the 41, a gain of three. What sprung that, you'll see there, you just saw number 15 for Stevenson hit the ground. That was a great block by Penn for the Tigers, and that was able to get Crosby to the outside. Pick up a good gain for them. Second down and about seven, 350, clock rolling remaining in the first half. Only the second pass thrown by Brilka in the first half. He's completed both for 28 yards. Curtis Zervik's only thrown twice for Stevenson in the first half. Handoff, that goes to Gerlesitz, and he's tackled at the 44. A gain of two, it's gonna be third and about four, and now we have an injured Tiger on the field. See here, just up the middle, and the offensive line for the Tigers, surprisingly pushing back that big Stevenson line. I couldn't quite tell who exactly was the injured player. It was kind of a delayed thing. All of a sudden, the, after the play was over, the player just uh, plopped down on his back 
As you see here at Stevenson High School, fans bundled up, but you know, all in all, not a real bad day. Not nearly as bad as it was a couple of weeks ago when we had that I was mentioning in the first quarter, the Palatine Marist game. That was one cold game. You're right about that. And they have the heater up here in the boot tonight. Oh yeah, I got the jacket off. This is great. And it's working just fine. As you notice, uh, I get ever so closer and closer to the heater as the time flows by. <laughs> It's going to be third down and about four. Still cannot tell exactly who that player is for the Tigers injured on the field inside the Tigers' own 45-yard line. 12 to nothing. That, in fact, is Gerlesitz. We do want to mention, we just uh, got pointed out uh, by the staff up here, there, Looks like there is going to be a stretcher. Oh, that's bad to see. Haven't uh, had a, as you again are watching IHSA high school playoff action. There's Steve Clancy on the headsets on the Stevenson sidelines, along with Dave Mrotek. I am Lee Anderson. Couldn't tell exactly how Gerlesitz. There you see the stretcher. Haven't seen anything that bad in our broadcast here. Yeah, as you, you said, never like to the, see it. When the play was over, it looked like everybody got up. And as soon as he tried to put weight on one of his legs, he just collapsed to the ground. Gerlesitz with three carries for eight yards in the game. But it looks like uh, his afternoon appears to be over. Uh, Gerlesitz, 5'9", 153, and a senior. We're going to take a look at the replay, see if we can exactly find out what possibly did occur. There's the swing pass out to the left side. Blocked by Penn. This is the. I believe this is the play That's before. The this is the play, previous yeah. play. Because it happened when Gerlesitz carried the ball. The, run, yeah, the next the play. Middle. A one yard gain. 327 remains in the first half. Wheaton Warrenville South leading 12 0. Here's the play now. We're going to get a look at it. See if we can see it, there he is just going straight up the middle and he gets taken down. It doesn't look like anything too see, serious. I don't know like, if he got his leg caught underneath. See, he, well, he, he got up very, uh, just momentarily and then just fell back down to the ground. We didn't happen to see that, but he did get up for a very brief instant and then fell back down to the ground. So it was like a delayed reaction. But from the replay, it didn't look like, obviously, I would think it would be some kind of a leg injury or possibly an ankle injury. And I didn't see how if possibly the Patriot player landed on his ankle. But we really couldn't tell from our vantage point. Yeah, it was tough to tell. It was just one-on-one. -on -one. There was no other offensive lineman you usually see you know, rolling over somebody's leg. Yeah. It didn't look like anything like that occurred. Crowd silenced. There you look at the Tiger bench. We're going to take a, a brief timeout, and we will return to Stevenson High School with the Tigers leading the Patriots 12 to nothing. More IHSA high school playoff action right after this here on the Continental Community Network. Well, Greg, with our high-speed internet access, you can download information hundreds of times faster than using a phone line. So you can get all that research done today. Great but there's something else I gotta do today. Maybe I can help. It's just that Greg wanted me to tell you. He's... Things aren't working out well between us. I mean you, you and Greg. You are special. You'd be surprised by everything we're doing to help you get information faster. Continental Cablevision. We work, you learn. We return to Stevenson High School. Class 6A semifinal between Wheaton Warrenville South and Stevenson. There you see Gerlesitz being moved off the field via a stretcher. And we will try to, if we do find out exactly what the injury may be, we will relate that to you. And now you, there you see the ambulance on the opposite side of the field, the big ambulance van. Gerlesitz hoping this is in his last game of the season. 
He hopes he has perhaps one more, provided the injury isn't so serious, and a trip to the Class 6A championship for the second straight year. Pass is complete. What a catch by Penn. And it looks like he's shaken up a little bit. He's down to the 30-yard line, and that's a gain of 26. Second big pass play in the game from Brilka to Penn. Brilka able to avoid the pressure. You'll see here, Stevenson gets through. He just steps to his right, finds Penn right over the middle, and he out jumps the Stevenson defender using his height to his advantage. He gets up a little gimpy on the play. We'll have to see if he's all right. First and 10, Tigers, ball at the 30 of Stevenson, and Wheaton Warrenville South already leading by a dozen. Nice move inside by Brilka on the keeper, and he's tackled at the 26 by Corcoran of the Patriots. Second and six. Tim Brilka, a very heady quarterback. First chance we've had a chance to see Wheaton Warrenville South ever here on Channel 3. Yeah, he usually makes the right decision. As you'll see here, he's got some room. He cuts it up inside. Able to pick up four or five yards for the Tigers, and they're marching again right before half. This could be a huge score if they push it across the end zone for Wheaton Warrenville South. Kelly Crosby, he's going to be very close to the first down. I think he's going to have it at about the 20, a gain of six. Yeah, they gave him the first down. Again, Rilke running that option. You'll see there, he knows exactly when to get rid of the ball. Crosby on the outside, they've got no spy for him, and he goes in on the defensive backfield, able to pick up that first down. And the Tigers looking to break it open before halftime. Two minutes exactly, clock continues to move, remaining in the first half. Single receiver on first and 10 from the 20. Straightforward running. Inside the 15 is Kelly Crosby, and he's down to about the 13, a gain of seven. This again, nothing fancy for the Tigers, just right up the gut. That's showing you their balance offensively. The Patriots don't know what to do defensively. The Tigers can throw the ball deep downfield. They can run to both sides of the field with Crosby using the option with Brilka, and then they can run it up the gut. Second and three, 121. Clock ticking remaining in the first half. Tigers up to this point, shutting out the Patriots, 12 zip. Option play, quarterback keeper Brilka's gonna lose about a yard. Tackled by Novacell in the backfield. It's gonna be third and four. That was the first time all game, Stevenson has really snuffed that option. Brilka not even enough time to make a decision as he's thinking of pitching it, and then he's surrounded by four or five Patriot defenders. Nowhere to go on that one, so oh, really, they've got plenty of time. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. Wheaton Warrenville South not taking a timeout, though. Clock moving, 35 seconds remaining in the first half. Heading for the end zone is Crosby, and he's caught from behind inside the five, down to about the four. It'll be first and goal. Again, just a pitch back to Crosby. He finds a hole. Nice blocking again by the offensive line. He cuts it down. He's a tough man to bring down. Big back near 190. Crosby, six foot, 188, and a senior in Wheaton Warrenville South. Burns their second timeout. They have one left in the half. Stevenson with two timeouts remaining. Both teams huddled around their respective coaches. Well, Stevenson's gonna have to change things around in the locker room. You know, last year when they lost to York, of course, no, we're talking about Wheaton, Warrenville, South, and York, but when they were playing York last year in the second round, they fell behind 21 to nothing and ended up losing 21 to 14. Here they're gonna have to go back into the locker room and come back with a tremendous turnaround to try to knock off the upstart Tigers. Wheaton Warrenville South has been very impressive. Both sides of the ball in the first half. Yeah, they have been, and it's gonna be tough coming back. If they can put one in the end zone here and go up by three scores, you're talking about the defending 6A state champions. A lot of returning starters. They've got the poise, which makes it even tougher to erase a big deficit against a team like the Tigers. First and goal 
from the three. Pitch back, Crosby gallops over his front line and has another Wheaton Warrenville South touchdown. Great run by Crosby. Just a run to the right side, and as you said, he galloped over the line. Again, that helps when you're six feet tall. You've got those long legs. You'll see right there, he's able to keep him moving forward, and he dives across the goal line to put him up by three touchdowns. Second touchdown as you look at the Stevenson partisans, and not a lot to cheer about for the Patriots here in the first half as they now trail 18 to nothing pending the extra point on the second touchdown rushing in the first half for Crosby. Tigers will go for two. Pass is knocked down by Adam Butler as Broca tried to convert the two-point play via the air and is unsuccessful. It remains an 18-point Tiger lead. Yeah, he tried to find the receiver on the right side, telegraphed it a little bit. The linebacker able to step in front, knock it down. But once again, the big play hurting Stevenson. We saw it last week, the big play led to the only two Fram scores. A big pass by Brown on their second touchdown, and Dorsey, of course, opened their offensive series with the 74-yard touchdown run against the Patriots. And so far today, Wheaton Warrenville South, with the exception of that first drive, they've had a big play on the punt return, which set up their second score. And there, the deep pass to Penn over the middle, a big gain, setting up their third touchdown. In case you're just joining us, one of the running backs for Wheaton Warrenville South was carried off on a stretcher. Now the ambulance is leaving Stevenson High School, taking the senior running back away as he appeared to have had some kind of either an ankle or leg injury. And again, he was wheeled off the field on a stretcher. And as I'm speaking to you now, the ambulance van carting the senior Tiger away. Let's hope he's okay. 18 to nothing, under a half minute remaining in the first half. Steve Clancy slips, gets back on his feet, straight forward with the return to about the 25. 14 yard kickoff return by Clancy as the clock is stopped with 21 ticks remaining in the first half. It'll be interesting to, to see if the Patriots try to do anything with this possession. Clancy on the kickoff here, you'll see his knee almost touches. He's able to use his hand to keep his balance or else that would have been another costly mistake for the Patriots starting deep in their own end. He's able to get it across the 20 out to the 25. But the Patriots without a high powered passing attack will have to see if they can get it downfield quickly. Zervik pumps, throws and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Riley and with the coverage Terrence Moore, the strong safety for the Tigers. You can see there that it's going to take a miracle to get the deep ball to work as all the defensive backs are further behind than the receiver. They're not going to give up the big play knowing that there's only 15 seconds left before half. They're just dropping back, keeping the Patriot offensive receivers in front of them. Well, Stevenson obviously might have to change up their game plan and, and pass more, which is something that they aren't as familiar with doing because they're primarily a running team and we'll have to see how successful they will be at doing that in the second half. Obviously, they'll be trailing by 18 at halftime, it appears. Exactly, they're gonna have to open it up a little more in the second half, plus they're gonna need a turnover or two from the defensive side of the ball. They're gonna need a break here or there to get back into this game. Yeah, that's a good point. When your offense is struggling, then the defense has gotta pull up the reins a little bit and somehow force a turnover and break up the momentum. Wheaton Warrenville South, very impressive here in the first half, down to 11 seconds remaining in the half, and the Tigers shutting out the Patriots, 18 to nothing in this Class 6A semifinal. To the winner, a trip to the Class 6A championship next Saturday in Normal. Hand off to Adam Butler, he'll gain four to the 29, and that will do it for the first half. The Stevenson Patriots will have a big mountain to climb in the second half if they're to advance to the Class 6A championship in a week. Wheaton Warrenville South leading Stevenson at halftime, 18 to nothing. Dave and I will be back for the second 24 minutes right after this here on Channel 3.
Exciting high school basketball action is coming to Continental Cablevision's Channel 3. Get ready to put it on. Today's age of television has brought the world closer, but somehow left our local communities behind. At Continental's Community Network, we pledge to be the resident experts and deliver your local television hometown edition and journal to your front yard. We believe we've found the solution to keep your lifestyle in constant update. We'll be with you from breakfast at Continental's Cafe up until you're ready for bedtime stories. Continental's Community Network, Channel 3. We bring your neighborhood home. To keep up with the latest contests and promotions, pay-per-view movies and special events, technological tips and breakthroughs, along with a look at what's going on in your community, you don't have to go online, on hold, or even on the road. And all this is possible because Continental Cablevision is your connection between your community and your world. Watch Continental Update with Kelly Gibbard Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. on Channel 3 and get up to date. Welcome to Sam Satellite City. May I help you? I'm interested in DBS. Direct broadcast satellite. You'll need a dish. A receiver decoder, some converters, connectors, various and sundry electronic components. I need all this. This will get you started. Say, how many TVs do you have? Three. Well then, you're just going to need a few more things, aren't you? There you go. Of course, this doesn't include your monthly subscription fees. That costs extra. And if you still want to watch local network programming, you'll also need a regular antenna. We have an excellent selection of regular antennas. Return to Stevenson High School in Lincolnshire. There you see on your screen the Stevenson Patriots are, have an uphill climb if they hope to move to the state championship game in Class 6A next weekend at 2.30 on the campus of Illinois State University in Normal. Wheaton Warrenville South, Dave, as Lee Anderson and Dave Rotek joining you here in our final regular or our final game of the year in fact here on channel three until basketball wheaton warrenville south dave a, a very impressive in the first half and they held steve clancy and kyle brandt the dynamic duo rushing the ball for the patriots to eight carries combined for just 18 yards so we'll see if they shake things around and go through the air a little bit more in the second half yeah it looks like they'll have to open it up they'll start with the ball in the third quarter we talked about the big players for each team stepping up Wheat Warrenville South Brilka and Crosby have had good games and as you said so far Clancy and Brent have been non-existent David Foster kicks it to diversion Again, he had a carry in the first half, and he is just a freshman that was brought up to the varsity level and getting some playing time in the biggest game ever for the Stevenson Patriots here at their school. They had never made it past the second round until this year, and here they are in the Class 6A semifinals against the defending 6A champions, the Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers. First and 10 Patriots as they're going from left to right here in the third quarter on your screen. Nothing doing on the first down handoff to Brandt. No gain as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10. Not a good sign for the Patriots so far. They're still trying to get that running game on track. You'll see Brandt will go into the line. That's the last play uh, prior to halftime, a four-yard run by Butler. Four carries, just five yards rushing for Kyle Brandt in the game. It's second and 10, triple backfield. Zervik pitches back to Clancy. Clancy breaks inside, and he is tackled at the 29-yard line by Whitkinak, the cornerback. It'll be third and five. Decent gain for the Patriots, running a little option of their own with Zervik and Clancy. You see the fake handoff up the middle, then the pitch to Clancy. Starts way back in the backfield. He's able to turn it upfield for a little gain, but there you see the speed of the Tigers' defense as they surround him with four guys. Third and five, Stevenson at their own 29-yard line. Early in the third quarter, Wheaton Warrenville South leading 18-0. Pass is thrown, the hook and ladder play. Jerasak to Clancy, gets a Patriot first down to the 40-yard line, a gain of 11. 
Interesting play there, although it almost, he should have ran the ball himself. He had the defender to the inside, nobody to the outside. If he would have turned that to the outside and gone upfield, he could have gained more than Clancy did. I'm questioning why he threw that back to Clancy. We saw a play like that last week between Jarosak and Clancy in Stevenson's 18-13 win over Frem. That play came in the first half. First and 10 at the 40, faking the handoff to Marth and then giving it to Brant and Zervik. Brant near side tackled at the 43-yard line. Again, uh, three, it'll be second and seven. Easter with the tackle for the Tigers. And that Tiger defense just swarming. You'll see there, they're out man. Clancy trying to block three Tiger defenders. Brant has nowhere to go and he just tries to turn it upfield to get as much as possible. Jira Sack, the receiver to the far side of the field, second and seven Patriots at their own 43. Zervik with the keeper. He's tackled from behind at the 46-yard line after a three-yard game, which will set up third and four. Again, Zervik just keeping it on the option this time. Surrounded again. Front seven for me. Bill South is playing up really tight. Stevenson sooner or later is going to have to try to take what the Tigers are giving him and go downfield a little bit more. It'll be third and four now. Patriots at their own 46 yard line. 18 to nothing in favor of the Tigers. We've played almost three minutes here in the third quarter. Handoff, Kyle Brandt. Brandt hit in the backfield and he'll lose yardage back to the 42 as he's tackled in the backfield by Eugene Beard. It's fourth down. Patriots look like they will punt. Yeah, they'll have to punt. With that formation on the Patriots, they were going to run the ball. They didn't have any receivers on either side of the field, either up to the left or the right. Makes it easy for the Tigers defenders. They just snap it up for either Brandt or Clancy. Again, Stevenson with a big size advantage over Wheaton Warren, Bill South, but you would never know it the way this game is developed. The Tigers, great quickness. Here's the kick. Takes the Stevenson bounce into the hands of Crosby at the 27. Crosby had a great run back in the first half. Now he breaks to the outside again, and he's brought down an entertaining run. It only netted about five yards, but Kelly Crosby Showing great second and third efforts before he's finally tackled by Skabitsky. Few missed tackles again by Stevenson. You see right there, he could have had him. Loses his traction. Another shot there. There he is just throwing the Patriot defender out of the way. Finally, they're able to run him out of bounds, but he's tough to bring down, and the Patriots have got to be a little better tackling, especially on special teams. We saw him with that big punt return in the first half. I beg your pardon, I said Skabitsky with the tackle on the special teams. In fact, it was Corcoran, I beg your pardon. Losing yardage and hitting the backfield is Vasquez. And it's going to be second down from the 28, a loss of four. Good defense by Stevenson. You'll see him read this play. They're able to get penetration on that left side of the Tiger line. And either Brilka or Vasquez, whoever kept that ball, was in trouble and going to get dropped for a loss. Well, again, we were saying, Dave, late in the first half, with your offense struggling, the defense has got to pull up the straps and somehow try to get a turnover. And here could be in a classic example where the Patriots need to do just that. Pitch back to Crosby, opposite side of the field. He's got some room and is still on his feet before he's knocked out of bounds at the 39. A gain of 11. It'll be third and about three. You'll see here on the replay, the linebackers for Stevenson get caught inside. Crosby able to turn the corner. They bite on the fake to the left. And there's Butler, number 44. He's supposed to be outside containing that. Crosby able to slip that tackle, and he gets close to the first down. 7-19 remaining in the third quarter. It's been all Tigers up to this point. 18 to nothing, as you see in the top left-hand corner of your screen, the Tigers. Right now, well in command, third and three. Handoff, Crosby, he's hitting the backfield, struggles forward to about the 41, but he's going to be about two yards short of a first down, and it would appear that the Tigers will boot it away. There's Skibitsky, look for number 45. He'll break through, make the tackle on Crosby as he's being blocked. Nice play by Skibitsky. 
Good leg tag, a little help from Clancy on top to keep Crosby short of the first down. Patriots will get the ball back here almost halfway through the third quarter. Jarosak and Riley awaiting the kick by the Tigers. Here's the kick. Opposite side of the field, Riley takes it at the 30, tries to break to the outside, and not much doing there for Riley as he's tackled by Lucas Drezwicki at the 33-yard line after just a short three-yard return as Riley, you see, scampers off the field. Once again, the coverage teams for the Tigers doing the job on their kickoffs and punts. The Patriots not able to break a run and help him out with field position. 6.31 remaining in the third quarter. Stevenson still with the goose egg on the scoreboard. Faking the handoff and then giving it to Joe Marth is Zervik and Marth tackled at the 38 after about a five yard game. That might be something we'll see a little more from the Patriots trying to use their strength in their big offensive line instead of trying to run to the outside where the Tigers can use their speed. You'll see here, just use your offensive line with their size to create a surge, push the Tigers back, and just take off four or five yards at a time that way. Second and five, handoff Brant. Brant breaks to the outside and he's gonna be close to a first down before he's tackled by Brad Camden, one of the two linebackers. It is a first down to the 44. And that's Brant's longest run so far in the game, which has now given him a total of 10 yards rushing on seven carries and again, Clancy and Brandt both have run a piece for over 1,300 yards today here about halfway through the third quarter. They've rushed for a combined just 28 yards on 13 carries. Option play, Zervik to Clancy. Clancy hit in the backfield and he'll lose a pair back to the 42. The outside running just not working for the Patriots. The Tigers are able to get outside contain it they use their speed once again and on the previous play Camden came out of nowhere even though Brandt got the first down here's the pitch to Clancy and you'll see the Tigers don't buy the fake by Zervik they're all eyeing Clancy and he's got nowhere to go as he is quickly surrounded in the backfield under five minutes clock continues to move in a rapidly paced game including the third quarter 18 nothing Tigers Here's the play down the right sidelines, and it is almost intercepted. It is ruled an incompletion. Doug Arden had it momentarily for the Tigers, but it did hit the ground, ruled incomplete. It'll be third and 12. It's a good battle with Jarosek. Ball a little overthrown, and they both went up for it. Could have been almost an interception, almost a completion as Jarosak was trying to wrestle it away from him before they came down to the ground. Clock stopped with the incompletion with 4.45 remaining in the third quarter. Third and 12 Patriots, ball resting for the moment at Stevenson's own 42 yard line. Big play for the Patriots here. This is not a situation they like, third and long, not being a good passing team. Double receivers to the near side of the field on third and 12, rolling right as Zervik passes well overthrown. About seven yards out of bounds, intended for Jarozak with the coverage for the Tigers, Witkinak. See, it's just a rollout by Zervik, and nothing more than he launches it. I don't know if it slipped out of his hands, but that was way over his head. You had to be seven, eight feet tall to have a chance at that one. There you see Bill Mitz. Tough day offensively for the Patriots. They run into a heck of a team in Wheaton Warrenville South. They're showing why they are the defending class 6A champions. And they're trying to defend it. If they win here, they'll once again go back to Illinois State University and play either Lincoln Way or Palatine. And that game will be played Saturday, November 30th. 2.30 p.m. on Sports Channel. Fair catch by Kelly Crosby at the 39.
First and 10, actually the nose of the ball right at the 40 yard line. Good field position for Wheaton Warrenville South to begin their next offensive series. 4.33 remaining in the third quarter. Lee Anderson and Dave Mrotek, Class 6A semifinal, and it's been all Wheaton Warrenville South. Option play, Vasquez, and Vasquez on first down has good yardage before he's brought down at the 46. He gains six. Nice run by Vasquez. You see him turn the corner on the outside. He's able to break the initial tackle. And a good gain on first down, bringing up second and four. Stevenson still being shut out in the later minutes here in the third quarter. Obviously, they weren't shut out all year with their undefeated 12-0 record. But I think this is obviously the, clearly the best team they've played all year. Second and four from the 46-yard line. Faking the handoff is Broca, and then he's hit and hit hard opposite side of the field at the 48, a gain of two, setting up third and two. You can tell Broca is really comfortable running the option. You see there, he waits till the very last second to pull the ball back as he sees his back doesn't have a chance to pick up the first down. He tries to do it himself. Broca, he was sacked once in the first half. He has 11 carries, 27 yards rushing for the game, including a one-yard touchdown run. Third down, two from the 48. Wheaton Warrenville South in their own territory. Vasquez hit in the backfield. Actually, he was hit while he was in the air diving near midfield near the first down marker, and he's going to be very close to a first down. I think they're going to have to bring out the chain game for a measurement. Yeah, they'll bring out and measure. When you need short yardage, though, you don't want to be leaving your feet. That's when you get driven back and stopped short of the first down. There you can see they are measuring, and he's going to be inches short. He took off way behind that first down marker. As you said, he left his feet, and if he would have kept his feet on the ground and tried to drive forward, use the blocking he's got in front of him, he might have able to pick it up, been able to pick it up with a uh, second effort. Fourth down and inches right near midfield. Wheaton Warrenville South will go for it. And I think it's a good move because really Stevenson hasn't been up to this point, even been close to scoring. I think their deepest penetration they got to about the Wheaton Warrenville South 38 yard line. They only need a couple inches. It would appear that we will be seeing a quarterback keeper by Broca, the quarterback. Offense very closely knitted together. The keeper by Broca, and he should, without question, have the first down. I don't even think they'll have to measure for this one. Uh, they won't need to. Initially stopped, it was a good surge by the Patriots, you'll see there, but then Broca twists off to his left, and that little spin and dive picks up the first down. There you look at some of the fans here, opposite from us, Wheaton Warrenville South fans, and they've had the most to cheer about today. It's been all Tigers. 246 clock rolling remaining in the third quarter and the Tigers leading the Patriots 18 nothing wide open and dropping the ball was Kyle Hubert the tight end but he was wide open just found a seam down the middle got behind the backer and it just goes off his fingertips as there is no one around him and that was another six for the Tigers if he was able to hold on to that one ball might be a little slippery as obviously there was snow on the field from the snowfall three days ago and they had to get rid of it prior to game time so the ball might be a little slipperier than normal but that was a pass that Hubert would probably say he should have caught second and ten Broca he is inside the 45 and down to the 44 six yard gain for the senior quarterback which will make it third and four that's great blocking by the Tigers offensive line. You saw Brilka in the backfield, spun to his left, turned around to his right, took all that time with the ball in the backfield, and he was still able to find a seam on the right side and pick up five yards. Ball marked just outside the 45-yard line, so it's going to be third down and a long five. Two minutes exactly. Clock continues to move, remaining in the third quarter. Broca fakes the handoff to Vasquez. 
He throws incomplete intended for the diving pen. John Riley, the closest defender for Stevenson, stopping the clock with a minute 51 remaining in the third quarter. Fourth down, Tigers will boot it away. Again, you'll see here on the replay, Penn trying to beat his man to the post. Has a step on him, the ball just a little overthrown. Just out of the reach of Penn. We saw Penn make a couple of nice catches in the first half. He had a 25-yard catch and a 24-yard catch, totaling 49 yards for the half. 151 remaining in the game. Here's the kick by Ladd, taken by Jarosek at about his own five. Jarosek now breaking to the outside, and we are going to have a flag as Jarosek is tackled at the 15-yard line. That's our first flag since, I believe, the first quarter. Stevenson didn't have any penalties in the first half. Yeah, although I think this one's going to go against them. It's going to be a clip against Stevenson, and it's going to back them up deep into their own end. And with 1.39 to go in the third and down 18 nothing, it's exactly what they didn't want. It's going to be a long journey into the end zone if Stevenson can do just that. And they are going to start, it appears, their drive inside the 10-yard line. It will be into the 10 at about the seven yard line. I'm kind of curious, he made the choice to field that punt inside his own five yard line. Usually when you're inside your five, you can't get much worse than that. So you take a chance and see if it'll roll into the end zone, but he elected to take it. The clipping penalty brings it back to the seven. 139 remains in the third quarter. First and 10 Patriots at their own seven. Handoff up the middle to Marth. Marth will gain about a yard to the eight, and that's all. You know, Lee, everybody talks when they mention Wheaton Warrenville South about Brilka, and here's their defense again, which I was just bringing up the point, stuffing the Patriots' running game. And you've got to give their defense credit. They shut out an undefeated New Trier team last week. So far this week, third quarter's almost over. Another undefeated Stevenson team, they're shutting them out again. I know Brilka and Crosby get all the ink in the paper, but their defensive unit looks very solid. Second and nine, great point there, Dave. From the eight-yard line, Brant trying to get to the outside, and he's hit in the backfield. Spun around to the seven. A loss of one, tackled by Sternad. From his linebacker position. It's that speed again. Speed kills, and they're using it. They know they're undersized compared to the offensive line for the Patriots, but they're spreading it out defensively. And the Patriots are not able to turn the corner or get anything going upfield. Nine yards rushing on eight carries in the game for Brandt. Clancy, seven carries, 16 yards. By those numbers alone, you can tell it's been a long rushing day so far for the Patriots. And time's running out on the undefeated Patriots for a chance at the title game. Third and 10 handoff to Clancy. He'll only gain about two, and it'll force the Patriots to punt from deep in their own territory. Same old story for the Patriots. The blockers for Stevenson are down on the ground. They're not able to get any surge whatsoever going against the Tigers. Wheaton Warrenville South getting good penetration into the backfield, and it's stopping the Stevenson running game today. Third quarter has come to an end. Tigers 12 minutes away from a return trip to the Class 6A championship to try to defend their title. They lead Stevenson 18 to nothing. Dave and I will be back for quarter number four right after you watch this here on Channel 3. Welcome to Sam Satellite City. May I help you? I'm interested in DBS. Direct broadcast satellite. You'll need a dish. A receiver decoders and converters, connectors, various and sundry electronic components. I need all this. This will get you started. Say, how many TVs do you have? Three. Well then, you're just going to need a few more things, aren't you? There you go. Of course, this doesn't include your monthly subscription fees. That costs extra. And if you still want to watch local network programming, you'll also need a regular antenna. We have an excellent selection of regular antennas. Statistics show that the average person over a lifetime has 75,000 dreams, 3.8 surprise parties, 8.6 different jobs, 39.7 teachers, 12 different hairstyles, plays 6.4 sports, and owns 3.5 pets. But the average person only has one life, so why mess it up with drugs? A message from a drug-free Navy and Marine Corps. We begin the first quarter. We begin
begin the fourth quarter, and it will start with a Stevenson punt by Riley from his end zone. He kicks it from the goal line, high kick. It does take a Stevenson bounce, taken on the hop by Crosby, and he's tackled right there, right about where he fielded it at the 43-yard line of Stevenson, tackled by Kyle Brandt. That was about the easiest Crosby's gone down all game. See Riley able to get the punt off, not much pressure on him. Pretty good punt for him, takes a nice bounce right up into the arms of Crosby. He decides and let it, instead of letting it roll any further, he'll pick it up, but he stopped right there. 18 to nothing in favor of Wheaton Warrenville South and they begin their next drive in great field position at the Stevenson 43. Brilka throws to a wide open Crosby. Crosby got it and he's out of bounds at the 19. A gain of 24. Crosby going down the right sideline showing you he can do it all. This time catching a pass from Brilka. The Tigers dynamic duo hooking up. They're opening it up a little here with an 18 to nothing lead. You saw him on third down on their last possession in the third quarter. Try to go deep. First and 10, once again, the Tigers in the red zone inside the 20 of Stevenson. Pitch back Crosby. He breaks to the outside. There is a flag. Crosby inside the 10. First down, but we'll wait and see as to what the flag is all about. A gain of about 10, but hold everything. As the clock stops, 11.35 remaining in the game. Penalty will be against the Tigers, and that will negate the fine run to the outside by Kelly Crosby. Crosby very much vying for our CCN MVP player of the game award, which will be announced in the final few minutes of the game. Holding penalty against Wheaton Warrenville South. It'll back them up to the 27 of the penalty occurred at about the 17. So now it's going to be first down and 18 for the Tigers at the 27 yard line of Stevenson. Broca, broken play it appears, but he makes something out of nothing and Broca is tackled at the 20, he gains seven in a play that it looked like he should have lost to. You're right, he should have lost to, but that was all set up. He was able to get the gain by the block by James Schuster, number 64 for the Tigers. Stuck with his block. Even though his man got into the backfield and kind of broke up the play, he stuck with it. Finally was able to put his man on the ground. And that opened up a little hole for Brilka to pick up some yards. Second and 11 from the 20. We've played one minute exactly in the fourth quarter. Clock continues to move. Tigers. Well in command, leading the Patriots by 18. Pitch back to Vasquez, and Vasquez is going to gain two as the tackle was made by, once again, Jeff Skabitsky. It'll be third and nine. Skabitsky's been all over the field defensively for the Patriots. Unfortunately, the Patriots defense has been on the field way too much, and they've got to be wearing down. There you see Skabitsky again gets a little help on that tackle, but they have got to be wearing down as Wheaton Warrenville South is a huge lead in time of possession. Third and nine for the Tigers. Pass thrown incomplete. Will we get a flag? Clancy looked like he tripped Penn near the goal line, but no flag. That could have been a judgment call. The ball was a little overthrown deep into the back of the end zone. I think the referee might say that the ball was deemed uncatchable, as you'll see here. There he trips, but that would have been a heck of a leap and a catch as the ball lands near the back of the end zone. Yeah, he would have had to come up with an ala Jerry Rice type catch. Exactly. A one-hander, catch that one. That's, you're probably exactly right. It was a judgment call. At the trip, it wouldn't have affected him trying to catch the ball. Well, now it is fourth down and nine. They don't elect to go for the field goal to the Tigers. They will go for it. Pass thrown, left sidelines, incomplete. 
Even if he would have caught the ball, I think he would have been out of bounds, intended for Penn. So Stevenson does hold, and they still trail 18 to nothing, 10.05 remaining in the game. 10 minutes left, that's still a lot of time, but the way their offense has struggled throughout this contest, they're really going to need to pick it up. They're going to need a, tur a quick turnover if they do score on this possession. They've got to open it up. They've got to start throwing the ball because right now they are battling the clock, not only the Tigers. Triple backfield for the Patriots, trailing by 18 early in the fourth quarter. Zervik has time. He throws, and it is almost intercepted by Doug Arden. He almost picked one off in the third quarter. The ball intended for Jarosek. Second and 10. Again, you can tell the Patriots not a passing team. You see Zervik drops back. He's got Jarosek deep, but he's the only receiver deep. That makes an easy decision for the safety on who to help out on. Zervik has thrown eight times, completed two in the game for just 16 yards. Their leading rusher in the game, Steve Clancy, he's rushed eight times for just 18 yards. And that just spells a whole lot of trouble as it has been for the Patriots in this one. Second down handoff to Clancy. He will gain five, or rather six, to the 25, which will set up third and four. There's Clancy, one of his better games of the afternoon, which is showing how bad things have gone for the Patriots this afternoon. Just a little dive to the left. He's able to get inside two of the Tiger defenders, pick up some yardage. Although there's still nine and a half to go in the quarter, or in the game, I would say, I think this is two down territory for Stevenson. Pass thrown incomplete. Well out of the outstretched arm intended for Jarosek. Arden with the coverage for Wheaton Warrenville South. It's fourth down. Let's see if the Patriots will try to go for it. Ken just overthrows him. Zervik really hasn't been on all afternoon. He's been struggling, overthrowing his receivers often. Stevenson's going to go for it. You really have to. I mean, they haven't gotten, as I said, even close to scoring in this game. They're trailing by 18. There's only 9-19 perhaps left in your season. Without question, if I was down coaching, well, look, there, there'd be a mistake anyway with me coaching, but I'd go for it too. Pass is thrown incomplete, intended for Riley. Eric Aster with the coverage from his free safety position. And the Tigers will take over at the 24 of Stevenson. And Zervik here drops back. He's got Riley cutting across the middle, but the throw's a little behind him. And you see Riley could have had that, but it's tough to catch the ball when you've got to try to twist your body into position. This has thoroughly been a dominating performance by Wheaton Warrenville South. I mean, you're talking about Stevenson. They have a great offense, a superb defense, and they are just absolutely dominating the Patriots. Coming in, Stevenson 12-0, highly regarded in Class 6A. They were the number three seed in the Class 6A playoffs, and just today they are being thoroughly dominated by the defending 6A champion Tigers. Well, I think it came down to the story of the offenses for both teams, and it's showing as you get further and further into these playoffs, the more balance you have offensively, the more benefit you're going to get out of it. Teams can't key on a certain particular scheme that the op opponent runs. And Stevenson is primarily a running team with Brant and Clancy. Wheaton knew that. They came into this game determined to stop the run, daring Zervik to throw, and he struggled all afternoon. Five-yard gain for Brilka on the quarterback keeper on first down. Second and five, Crosby trying to break to the outside. He's hitting the backfield. Skibitsky and Clancy. Corcoran also assisting on the tackle for the Patriots. And that's a loss back to the 23, which will set up third and nine. As you look at the replay, nice job stopping the sweep by the Patriots. Yeah, the Patriots defense really hasn't played that badly all afternoon. They've just been on the field all afternoon. They're wearing down a little bit, and they just haven't had any help from their offensive teammates. 8.15, clock moving, remaining in the game. Wheaton Warrenville South trying to move to the Class 6A championship once again to try to defend their title with a date with either Palatine or Lincoln Way. It's third and nine. And again, we talked about how much size 
that the Patriots have over Wheaton Warrenville South, but as you're seeing, size does not mean everything. Penalty flag, pass is caught, and getting down to about the 11-yard line near side of the field is Justin Penn. But hold everything, that one could be coming back. Yeah, I believe that one is coming back. I think they got him for holding. As you'll see, the Stevenson, on the Stevenson right side of the line, they get good penetration coming from Brilka's blind side. And I believe right there, they got him tugging on the jersey as one of the Stevenson linemen were breaking through to get to Brilka. Holding penalty, that's the fourth penalty against Wheaton Warrenville South. The ball will be moved back to the 38 yard line. So that results in a 15 yard penalty against Wheaton Warrenville South. They need to get to the 16 yard line. And it's going to be third down and about, or they need to get to the 14 yard line of Stevenson. Third down and 24. Broca throws in the backfield intended for Crosby. There's Skibitsky pulling him down by the shoe. Fourth and 24, and the Tigers will boot it away, trying to pin Stevenson deep with 743. That was a good way to play the screen. The linemen go in, put pressure on him, but Skibitsky stays home on his man, Crosby, not letting him go anywhere, even if Crosby did make the reception. Ladd will punt it. Once again for the Tigers, Riley and Jarosek inside their own 10 yard line, awaiting the kick. 7.43 remaining, there's a flag once again. It's gonna be a penalty once again against the Tigers for the delay of game. That'll be their fifth penalty of the game. The only thing that really Stevenson has won in this game is that they've committed less penalties in Wheaton Warrenville South. Tigers with five, Patriots just one. What's really hurt Stevenson is we were talking earlier, they needed a break, either a turnover, or a good return on a kick or a punt because they have lost the battle of field position this afternoon. The ball is kicked opposite side of the field that bounces at the 20 and then rolls dead at the 15 yard line. Stevenson will take over first and 10 with 7.32 remaining in the game and trailing by 18. There was no, or there has not been up to this point, no scoring in the second half. It was 18 to nothing at halftime. And the score remains the same as you look at the Stevenson cheerleaders. Certainly not a lot to cheer about as far as the game goes positively today for the Patriots. They have just run into a superb defending state champion in the Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers who appear headed to another return trip downstate. Pass is thrown and it is intercepted, I believe. Doug Hart with the interception. Now they're saying he caught it. I think they're saying the Patriots are saying Jerosak caught it. I think they're saying that they both had a, what the call, I believe, is what they're making is that they both had possession when they came down. And if both players have possession, it goes to the offensive side. Even though the Wheaton Warrenville South player ended up with the ball, when the two players landed, they're saying it was a dual possession. And it's almost like in baseball, a tie goes to the runner. The offense is going to get the call on any time that both players are fighting for possession and they land. Well, the play ruled the completion, though it appears on the field. However, the officials are discussing it. If the play does, or is ruled, rather, a Stevenson completion, it would be for 35 yards. Let's see if we can see here. Both players will go up, and they both do have a hand on the ball. You see there, Jerosax, they both have it. They're wrestling for it. Both players hit the ground. It didn't look like Jerosak really had much control on it, so I'm kind of questioning the call. He did have a hand on it, but as far as possession, it looked like the Tiger defender certainly had more of the football. That was Stevenson's biggest offensive play of the game. Still a delay on the field with 7.23 remaining in the game. There you see Zervik, the quarterback, number 10. The officials 
looked like they finally got things restored, and the play does stand, a 35-yard completion from Zervik to Jerosak. First and 10, Patriots at midfield. Hand off Clancy. Clancy hit at midfield, shakes off a tackler. He's still on his feet, and he'll have another Patriot first down to the 39. His biggest run of the game, 11 yards, tackled by Arden for the Tigers. You're right, his biggest run of the game. It's making you wonder where they were all afternoon. Clancy there, able to break a tackle as the Tiger defensive lineman get caught inside. He's able to turn that left corner, get up field before he's brought down in the defensive backfield of the Tigers. Zervik on the option play, pitches it to Clancy, and Clancy is knocked out of bounds inside the 35. He's brought down at the 33, a gain of six. Clancy, 11 carries now for a modest 41 yards. Clock is stopped, 7.01 remaining in the game. Here's a case right here. The Patriots, if they score, might go for an onside kick because they need three scores. Oh, they definitely have to go for an onside kick. Like you said, they need three scores. First and 10 at the 39. Handoff again to Clancy. Clancy, I beg your pardon, that was from the 33, so it was second and four. Clancy brought down at the 21 but not before he picks up another Stevenson first down. Where do you see down. this hole open up on the left side as Wheaton gets caught inside again? Look at that great blocking. Jerosak keeping his man, good block by the receiver downfield. And where was this running room in the first three quarters? Clancy's first nine carries netted 24 yards. His last three have netted him 31. Clancy again as he's been the workhorse of late. Scampers inside the 20, and he is brought down at the 17, a gain of four. Clancy going up the middle this time, trying to change it up. He's been running to the left side. This time he'll take it up the gut behind his center. Picks up four yards. It could be a case here where the Wheaton Warrenville South defense is still a little upset with that call. That questionable call on that long pass play. Second and four, handoff, Butler. Butler dives close to the first down near side of the field, down to about the 11. Good run by Butler, but he's got to try and get out of bounds. They're running around six minutes to go in the game. Butler here trying to get to the left side. He's leg tackled, he'll stay in bounds. The clock will run. It is a first down to the 11-yard line. Nearly halfway through the fourth quarter, Patriots' first serious scoring threat of the game. Clancy, the ball carrier, and he's hit at the 10. A gain of only one. The Tigers stiffening up there defensively. Able to stop Clancy, as you see, both Tiger linemen on the inside able to push off their blocks and close up that hole rather quickly. Riley and Jerosek, the receivers to the far side of the field. Deuce backfield on second and nine. Zervik pitches it back to Clancy. Clancy tries to break to the outside, and he is hit at the nine. Boy, great defensive play out of the secondary by free safety Eric Aster, number eight. But that's about as good as it gets out of the defensive backfield. That is showing their speed there. You want an example of it. Look at this. Clancy had the whole right side. He had the corner. He starts to accelerate. And what closing speed by the Tigers as Arden was there as well to make the tackle. Clock becoming more and more the enemy of the Patriots. Under five minutes now, 4.55, clock moving, remaining in the game. Patriots trailing by 18. Third down handoff to Kyle Brandt. And Brandt is very close to the goal line. No word yet. I think they're gonna mark it just inside the one. It should be first and goal. It will be first and goal on the four yard handoff or carry by Brandt. Good run by Brandt. Let's see here as he dives to the goal line. Excuse me, that wasn't Brandt. That was Adam Butler with the carry. Butler, as you just mentioned, Adam Butler has a touchdown off the left side and it's 18 to six. And finally, the Patriots get into the end zone. 
Took them a little over three and a half quarters, but they final, finally get in the end zone, and now they trail 18 to six, pending the extra point. They will go for two. That was a good drive by the Patriots. All started with that long pass play, that questionable call. They kept it going. Unfortunately for them, it took about three minutes off the clock, which right now is their biggest enemy. Patriots going for two. Deuce backfield, receivers split right and left. Hand off Clancy. Clancy tries to break to the outside, and he is going to lose a pair. Tackled once again by Eric Aster. Two-point conversion fails, and it remains a 12-point Wheaton Warrenville South lead. Aster again coming out of the defensive backfield for the Tigers, making the tackle, dropping Clancy actually for a loss. Those defensive backs for Wheaton Warrenville South are not only tall to cover the bigger receivers, but they're quick as well as they can get outside and help on the running game. Well, there's a classic example of Wheaton Warrenville South showing their quickness. John Thorne saying that his team's very quick. And, and one thing John did tell me too, as he, again, as the 17th year head coach of Wheaton Warrenville South, formerly Wheaton Central, they moved in 1992 and became Wheaton Warrenville South. He was saying, these guys just, he loves coaching them. They're unselfish kids. And he said it's just really been a delightful year to coach this team, just a, a delightful group of guys. Really a, a coach's testament to his team. And they've played well today. They've done their coach proud. Pitching a shutout up till this point defensively. They had the shutout last week against New Trier, 42 to nothing. But both sides of the ball, Wheaton Warrenville South has played a very solid game. Offensively, they struggled a bit in the second half. It looked like they were trying to open it up, do a few things different. They got a little away from their game plan. That's why they haven't put any points on the board in the second half. But nevertheless, they're still up by two scores with only four and a half to go in the game. There you see on the screen the Patriots moving to the far side of the field, awaiting the onside kick attempt. Kick is kicked in the air. Boy, kind of an unusual call there. Right into the arms of Ladd. They didn't even get it on the ground and actually didn't even give their players a chance to get close to the ball. Yeah, that was nothing more than a bad kick. I think what he was trying to hear is to get a loft on it and almost make it like a jump ball. You want a nice, yeah. high, looping arc, and it's supposed to go 10 yards. Instead, he shoots a line drive. And as you said, the Stevenson players have no chance to recover that. He was going for like a 10-yard pooch and just jump ball and may the best man get it, but bad kick on their part. First and 10, Tigers at their own 40-yard line. They're just trying to wind down the clock and protect their 12-point lead. Kelly Crosby gains two. Well, should we hold off or uh, should we uh, announce our CCN MVP? We still have a little bit of time to go. Okay, we are, we've just gotten a word by Ronnie in the truck that we are going to hold off on our CCN MVP. 4-13 remaining in the game. Stevenson coming into this game in the playoffs in the first round or rather, Wheaton Warrenville South beat Sandberg out of Orland Park 34 to seven. Then they beat Dunbar. Dunbar really giving them their toughest game up to this point in the playoffs. They knocked off Dunbar 30 to 22 before last week, shutting out New Trier, surprisingly in easy fashion, 42 to nothing. New Trier came into that game unbeaten. And here they lead with a little over four minutes remaining in the game, the unbeaten Stevenson Patriots 18 to 6. Stevenson had easy wins in their first two round playoff games. They knocked off Collinsville 38 to 8. There you see the score. Fourth quarter, 4-13 remaining. And the guests leading the home team 18-6. After beating Collinsville in the first round, a couple of weeks ago they beat Wheaton North 34 to 14 before last week in a game you saw here on Channel 3. And a tough affair knocked off Fremd 18 to 13. Second and eight from the 42 yard line. Broca handoff, ball carrier up the middle to the 45 yard line. That's Crosby once again. It'll be third and five. I think you're gonna see a lot of this play the rest of the game, just Crosby up the middle as Wheaton Warrenville South is gonna try to run out the clock and look ahead to next week. 
and they'll play either the Pirates of Palatine or Lincoln Way. And we've seen Palatine quite a bit this season, and their offense is quite impressive, and it'll be interesting to see how this Wheaton-Warrenville South, if they do hold on for the victory today, how they'll go about to try to stop that potent attack of the Pirates. Yeah, should the Pirates win, we were talking at halftime, it'd be quite a matchup. The Pirates, they ended up finishing ranked number one at the end of the season in the Class 6A poll. They weren't seated number one. They do a lot of that by uh, strength of schedule. They were seated fourth, but they were the top team in Class 6A at the end of the regular season. And if they do uh, get by Lincoln Way, that'd be quite a matchup with the defending 6A champion, Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers. And again, the Class 6A championship game will be played 2.30, November 30th at Hancock Field at the campus of Illinois State University in Normal. There you see Kelly Crosby has 15 carries for 65 yards. Broca back to pass, rolls near side of the field, throws on the run, wide open is Penn. And he's tackled at the 35-yard line, another Wheaton Warrenville South first down. And that could be just about icing on the cake. That could be salt in the wounds if you're a Stevenson fan. As Penn just finds an open spot in front of the safety and gets behind the cornerback. And he just parks it right there. You'll see the uh, defensive back covering him. He slipped on the play. That's why he was down at the 30. There you see Kelly Crosby, number 37. I think it's unanimous. He is our final CCN MVP here on Channel 3 for our football broadcast this year. First and 10 from the 35. Vasquez up the middle will gain four to the 31. Well, I do have this opportunity. I do want to thank District 125, Stevenson Athletic Director John Martin, as well as both head coaches for Wheaton Warrenville South, John Thorne, and for Stevenson, Bill Mitz, for letting us bring this Class 6A semifinal game, first ever semifinal game that I have done, and we're putting a wrap around our season for 1996 until the start of basketball. There you see Kelly Crosby, number 37, our CCN most valuable player in our final football game here in 1996. Handoff to Crosby, and our CCN MVP will gain four to the 27 and set up third and about one. Ball is at the 28, 27. Good all around game by Crosby. Not big on the yardage as far as rushing the stats. He had the two TDs. And Wheaton Warrenville South did what they had to do to win this game, and they're going to head down to normal. I don't want to dismiss Lincoln way too early. I was a little presumptuous thinking that Palatine would come away. Lincoln way in themselves, in their own right, a good team, undefeated, taking on the Pirates later today. But Wheaton Warrenville South will be one of the two teams downstate. Crosby on third and one easily gets the first down as he's finally dragged down by Novacell, but not before he'll have easily, as I mentioned, a first down and a gain of 12 yards to the 15. Nice run by Crosby, great blocking up front as he's able to get through that initial hole and then break a couple tackles. He gets turned backwards and is still able to drag a couple Patriot defenders an extra couple yards. 147 remaining in the fourth quarter. Dave Mrotek will be heading down to the field as we will try to set up an interview with Kelly Crosby, the senior running back for Wheaton Warrenville South. Just over a minute and a half remaining in the game. Clock stops once again. Delay of game Delay against of Wheaton Warrenville Delay South. Five yard walk off, brings the ball back Sixth down. penalty the now for 43 left. yards ruled against Making the Tigers in the contest. Wheaton Warrenville South will once again play in the Class 6A championship game. They have two state titles. Hey Josh, Lee. Class 5A title and a Class 6A title. And they were also runner ups twice as well. Brilka, quarterback keeper, breaks to the outside. He's tackled from behind and will gain about three to the 12-yard line. Sean Coughlin with the tackle for the Patriots. 
Brooker does a nice job getting the outset. There you see, fakes the handoff, gets a little bit of a block, scampers away from Rache Hill. He gets away from Corcoran momentarily before Coughlin finally swallows him up at the 12. Second and seven, we're under a minute remaining in the game. I don't think Stevenson's even gonna stop the clock. Handoff, Crosby. And Crosby backs down to the 11, a gain of one. Kelly Crosby, 18 carries for 82 yards. So the Patriots will close out their season at 12 and one. You see the replay, nothing fancy. Just tries to back his way for as much yardage as he could get, which only, as I mentioned, netted him one. Stevenson. They won't make it to normal. There you see, well, I can see from my vantage point, opposite of us, the Wheaton Warrenville South fans with a sign stating exactly the fact, back to normal. Final seconds of the game. This will be the final play. Broca downs it. And Wheaton Warrenville South moves into the Class 6A championship game. Congratulations to them, despite the defeat. Congratulations to Stevenson. They finish at 12 and one. The final score here from Stevenson High School in Lincolnshire in this Class 6A semifinal, Wheaton, Warrenville South 18, Stevenson six. Dave Rotek will be back with hopefully an interview with our CCN MVP, Wheaton, Warrenville South's Kelly Crosby. Right after you watch this here on Channel. Channel 3. Welcome to Sam Satellite City. May I help you? I'm interested in DBS. Direct broadcast satellite. You'll need a dish. A receiver decoders and converters, connectors, various and sundry electronic components. I need all this. This will get you started. Say, how many TVs do you have? Three. Well then, you're just going to need a few more things, aren't you? There you go. Of course, this doesn't include your monthly subscription fees. That costs extra. And if you still want to watch local network programming, you'll also need a regular antenna. We have an excellent selection of regular antennas. Big scene. Capsule splashes down. You pull Hanks to safety, okay? Stroke, stroke. More passion. Grab Hanks tight, but not too tight, because we don't want to hurt Tom. He's a big star, after all. Gently, gently. I've just come back from space. This is a big scene. You get to shine. You'd be surprised by everything we're doing to bring you your favorite movies. Continental Cablevision. Let's, uh... We work, you watch. We return to Stevenson High School in Lincolnshire. The Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers are into the state championship game in Class 6A. Once again to defend their title, they knock off Stevenson by 12. Without further ado, let's send it down onto the field. Dave Rotek has our CCN MVP and a fine one at that. Dave, take it away. Thanks a lot. I'm down here on the field with Kelly Crosby, the CCN MVP of this semifinal Class 6A game. Kelly, you had a good all-around game today, rushing and receiving the ball. You had the two touchdowns in the first half. Especially in the first half, it seemed like you guys were having a lot of success with the option to the outside. Yeah, um, our line did a great job, once again. They do a great job every day, or every like game. It's like, oh man, they're just great. I love them. I love I'm giving them. a lot of credit to the offensive all line. Yeah, all the time. Well deserved in that respect. In the second half, it seemed like they shut you down a little bit more. They couldn't get anything going on their offensive end of the part. You guys' confidence seemed to be growing a little bit. You opened it up a little more offensively. Is that something you're working on to do next week in the championship game? Hopefully. I mean, I don't understand why. I guess they just like figured some game plan out, but and our defense stopped them big, and that was the main key in this game. Well, you're going back to the championship game where you were last year. How much do you think experience is a factor? Your ball club is rather experienced, a lot of returning players. Do you think that'll play a big part in the championship game downstate? Hopefully. I mean, I was a little, I'll admit, I was a little nervous coming to this game. But like next week, it's going to be just great. I hope we're not nervous at all. Well, that's it from down here on the field. Once again, Wheaton Warrenville South heading to the Class 6A championship game with Kelly Crosby, the CCN MVP. I'm Dave Morotak. Back up to you, Lee. Okay, Dave and Kelly, thank you very much. Thanks to you, Dave, throughout the year. I want to thank also Bill DePue, Ron Muckowitz, 
the entire Continental Community Network crew. The final score, Wheaton Warrenville South 18, Stevenson 6. That'll do it for Pigskin, but not too long. We'll have basketball for you here on Channel 3. Thanks for a great year. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you around the corner for hoops. Until then, Lee Anderson saying so long from Stevenson High School. Welcome to Sam Satellite City. May I help you? I'm interested in DBS. Direct broadcast satellite. You'll need a dish. A receiver decoders and converters, connectors, various and sundry electronic components. I need all this. This will get you started. Say, how many TVs do you have? Three. Well then, you're just going to need a few more things, aren't you? There you go. Of course, this doesn't include your monthly subscription fees. That costs extra. And if you still want to watch local network programming, you'll also need a regular antenna. We have an excellent selection of regular antennas. Exciting high school basketball action is coming to Continental Cablevision's Channel 3. Get ready to put it on. Five yard gain for J.R. Ram. favorites heading to normal this weekend. JR takes JC back to state. The caravan gets to ride as Carmel pulverizes the rock. There's no rush for Stevenson fans to pack for a road trip, while Palatine packed it in early against Lincoln Way. Loyola played Maris a little bit closer this time and gets to play this guy in the prep bowl. Hey, this show not only looks good, it sounds good. All right, we'll, we'll go. We'll with stay it. with it. Good. We're staying at three, so Ryder got to help us in the flip. Okay. For this one, tell Schulte to go to, to uh, Z. Tails is the call. call. That's, That's it, it is. is. Yeah, did you get that? We got it. Sports Files coming up next.
Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second to last week for Sports File for the fall season. And that second to last week means we are in semifinal action for football playoffs. And we've got plenty of playoff action tonight. We've got 4A, 5A, and 6A, as well as the Catholic Metro Championship and the Public League Championship. Those two teams meet for the Prep Bowl this Friday. I'm Mike Newsham alongside Dan Richmond, and why don't we start off tonight with 4A. Providence fans, they ran out of fingers to count on a long time ago while trying to keep track of the Celtics winning streak. By now they have probably given up. If they haven't, they might as well because the winning streak is now meaningless. The Celtics have just one more game to play in the 1996 season and this last game is the most important. The winning streak is meaningless should Providence lose this weekend in normal in the 4A championship game. After dominating their win over Minooka on Friday, it seems as if win number 42 is inevitable. We pick this one up in the first quarter. A nice pass from Robert Cruz to Eddie Olsta. Olsta goes down at the four yard line. A few plays later, who else but Louis Medina to make it 17 0 Celtics? Of course, when there's defense, in a shutout, usually Indian QB, DJ Spray overthrows his receiver. Scott Janik picks it off. That will lead to the Celtics' second field goal of the night. It's now 20 to nothing. That would be the score at the half. And then after a Matt Ryder interception return for a touchdown made it 27 to nothing. A Medina touchdown made it 34 to nothing. And then number 19, Dave Pop, returns a Manuka punt 57 yards in the mud and mire to put the Celtics up 40 to nothing. This was with 34 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Celtics would score one more time to make the final 47 to zero. And during their streak, the Celtic offense has been unstoppable. Louis Medina with 185 yards on 23 carries and three scores. Those 185 yards put him at number two on the all time season single season rushing leaderboard. However, he dropped to number three after Russell Harvey of Dunbar played on Saturday. Manuka's leading rusher, Ryan Kerner, was held to minus three yards on seven carries in the first half. And now Manuka will take on. Well, first of all, let's take a look at that leaderboard. Hickey Thompson from Belleville Altoff set the single season rushing yardage mark with 3,105 yards in 1990. You see Russell Harvey after his game this weekend is at 2636. Louis Medina right behind him at 2586. And James Randall from Joliet Catholic, who we will hear about later on in the show, is number four. And each of those three have one game left. Now, the Metamora Redbirds will take on the Providence Celtics. Both teams undefeated, number two versus number one in the 4A final. Last time Providence went three straight was back in 1977 through 75 when they were in 3A. Just two months ago, the Joliet Catholic Hilltoppers were just another 500 team, not even thinking about the playoffs. But the Hilltoppers turned things around by winning their last three games in the regular season and making the playoffs as the number 27 seed. The Hilltoppers have certainly taken advantage of their opportunity by making it to the Class 5A semifinals. Hilltoppers' opponent is Hananiga, who is undefeated and is averaging 31 points a game in their three playoff wins. Will the Cinderella story continue for Joliet Catholic, or will it be Hananiga advancing in the state finals? First cop quarter, Hilltoppers down 6 0. That was James Randall with the two yard touchdown. Hilltoppers lead 7 6. And yes, the Hilltoppers want to refuse to lose, but so does Hananiga. In the second quarter, this is their star running back, Matt Beachy. Look at Beachy go on the outside, 17 yards for the touchdown, 12 7 Indians. Joliet Catholic coach Bob Stone says, hey, we got to get back on the scoreboard, and the Hilltoppers will. Still in the second quarter, the gift to James 